Uh, good morning. My name's Amy Rosenbluth. I want to thank you for letting me present here at Sages. Um, this is a presentation for approaching a 10 centimeter right sided pheochromocytoma laparoscopically performed at the Mount Sinai St. Luke's Hospital. This is presented on behalf of myself, Drs. Bellini, Golis, and Tai, and we have nothing to disclose. This is the case of a 19 year old female who presented to her primary care physician for an annual checkup. And during her checkup was found to be persistently and profoundly hypertensive with systolic blood pressures in the 170s. Given her young age and significant hypertension, her primary care physician started a workup for a catecholamine secreting tumor. Plasma metanephrines were revealed to be elevated in this patient and a CT abdomen pelvis was ordered and performed in an attempt to localize the catecholamine secreting tumor. The CT scan revealed a right-sided adrenal mass, approximately six by five by six centimeters with central necrosis. Given the combination of the biochemical markers of elevated plasma metanephrines and the adrenal mass, this patient was diagnosed with a pheochromocytoma. Pheochromocytomas and paragangliomas are catecholamine secreting tumors. They can create symptoms of headaches, tachycardia, sweating, and hypertension. Although hypertension in general, only 0.2% of all patients with hypertension are caused by pheochromocytomas or paragangliomas. These masses are most commonly found in people ages 40 to 50 years old. Any patient who's 20 years or younger found to have hypertension should be worked up as catecholamine secreting tumors as a possible cause. Most of these tumors are sporadic. However, about 30% of them are genetic and found in hereditary syndromes like von Hippel-Lindau, MEN, and neurofibromatosis. These are more common, hereditary syndromes are more commonly found in this younger population who develop catecholamine secreting tumors, and we therefore recommend genetic workup. Our patient's workup was negative for all genetic markers. 90% uh, of catecholamine secreting tumors are found in the adrenal gland and termed as pheochromocytomas. The malignant potential of a pheochromocytoma can only be seen on final pathology as a histological biopsy and biochemical markers are the same as benign tumors. Malignant potential is determined by invasion of local surrounding tissue. Most of these masses are approximately five centimeters. Any tumor greater than six centimeters should raise concern for malignant potential. Preoperatively, these patients should be managed to control their hypertension and possible sympathetic surge. Traditionally, this was done with alpha blockade and a beta blockade starting about three days later. However, research has shown that calcium channel blockers can be used to control the hypertension and possible sympathetic surge and are associated with low morbidity and mortality and help stave off the symptoms of orthostatic hypotension that can be common if, with alpha blockade. Uh, laparoscopic adrenalectomies have been safely performed in pheochromocytomas eight to 10 centimeters large. To begin our procedure, the patient was intubated under general anesthesia with careful hemodynamic monitoring. The abdomen was entered with an OptiView trocar, um, insufflated, and the following trocars were placed under direct vision. The liver, uh, right lobe of the liver was mobilized so that a retractor could be placed and it could be elevated superior immediately so that we could identify the tumor. On inspection, the tumor looked significantly larger than had been seen on preoperative imaging, estimating about 10 centimeters large. Drota's fascia was incised and the superior pole of the kidney was bluntly dissected off the adrenal gland. Next, our attention was turned to the peritoneum uh, laterally next to the duodenum, which was incised and carefully dissected with the ligature. Given the large size of the tumor, it was very close to the duodenum. This needed to be done very carefully to avoid heat spread. At this point, the inferior and medial attachments of the adrenal gland were carefully dissected, which allowed us to lift the adrenal gland laterally and expose the IVC. There was continued dissection, and eventually the adrenal vein came into view. This was noted to be significantly larger than is usually seen for adrenal glands. It was carefully dissected, and we elected to use a GIA vascular load staple to obtain vascular control given the large size of the vein. Once control of the adrenal vein was obtained, we were able to continue to mobilize the adrenal mass, turning our attention to the superior attachments. At this point in the case, the inferior, medial, and superior attachments have all been dissected. 
We intentionally left the lateral attachments in place throughout the case in order to provide stability and prevent any flipping of the tumor during our dissection. We finally turned our attention to these lateral attachments and continued our dissection, allowing it to be circumferentially freed, after which we extended our port site incision so that we were able to remove the tumor in an endocatch bag. Postoperatively, the mass was noted to indeed be 10 centimeters in size, about four centimeters bigger than preoperative imaging had indicated. Pathology revealed an encapsulated pheochromocytoma with no invasion of surrounding structures. The patient was able to be taken off all blood pressure medications and is doing well actually now about six months postoperatively. Thank you. <laughs>